Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D sitting in the comfort of my Sam Mobile. Just contemplating, meditating, and just enjoying the day that the Lord has made. I haven't done a video in quite some time. Been kind of uh, busy with other things. Uh, of course, uh, seeking the face of the Lord is a primary thing or priority thing. And um, just want to bring to your short mini sermonette so that I can encourage you to build you up, to inspire and motivate you in the Lord. He is good and he's worthy to be praised. And he's right there with you right now, ready to bless you because that's what he does. He blesses his children. He corrects. He directs. And of course, he impresses upon us to seek his face so that we may get closer to him. Let me read to you this thought that I had from this uh, little book that I picked up at, on my way to Pennsylvania one time up there in the country in the boondocks. It's called The Little Book of Possibilities or yeah, possibilities, a little book of possibilities. These are positive thoughts and possible thoughts. And I just want to read this one to you that impressed me. And I want to share it with you. It says, opportunity dances with those who are already on the dance floor. You want me to read it again? Okay, I was glad you asked. I'm just about to do that. Listen to this. Opportunity dances with those who are already on the dance floor. My question to you, are you on the dance floor? Did you get out of the dance floor? Or you never got in or on the dance floor? Well, when the opportunity comes... Is ready to dance with those that are already on the dance floor. Now, let me break that down to you. The first word is opportunity. We all know what that means. I have an idea what that means. Here's what the dictionary says. A set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. Again, I remind you, I want to encourage you to build yourself up and to get ready to fulfill what God has called you into. That's my purpose. Circumstances, a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. Those, those are circumstances. And opportunity brings circumstances. When the opportunity knocks, doom, 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 you and I must be on the dance floor ready for whatever it is that we've been called into and whatever it is that you have a desire for. Your desire brings you and I into our destiny. What are you desiring that is positive, that is healthy, that is good for you? That brings you into your destiny in life. An opportunity knocks and is ready to dance with those that are on the dance floor, ready to accept the challenges of life. Now, let me give you some words that would help you. The first word for me, if you're going to be ready on the dance floor for opportunities to knock and to come to you, we must first be alert. Alert. In other words, know what time it is. Know what season we're in. Life is about seasons. We live here in New York, or you're in Boston, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Connecticut. Certain areas have four seasons. Other areas, just one season. Could be summer all year long, hot weather. But when you're living in this atmosphere like this, the seasonals moments, they change. You got... In New York, for instance, where I'm from, you got spring, summer, fall, and winter. Seasons are also in our life. There are seasons where you're up on top of the mountain. Seasons when you're down in the valley. 
Seasons when you're glad, seasons when you're sad, seasons when you're healed and healthy, seasons when you may be facing an illness, a physical liability or physical discouragement or physical limitations. Maybe times when you have food, plenty of it. Maybe time when you have to settle for cheese and crackers. Paul the Apostle said to the book of Philippians, in the book of Philippians, to the Philippian church, he says, I've learned to be contempt in all situations when I have plenty, when I have little. But there's seasons, and when you understand that life brings season, then you adjust to the seasons. They don't take you off guard. You're not surprised. You expect them. And so we need to be alert if you're going to Get into the dance floor for the opportunities to knock. Be alert. Be aware of your circumstances. Be alert that God is ready to bless. Be alert that God wants to give you health and wealth. Be alert that God wants to prosper you. Be alert that God is ready to forgive you. Be alert that God is ready to restore you. Be alert. So therefore you have to put yourself in a position to understand God, to understand his word, his purpose, and to understand his intentions for your life. God works with us according to our need and according to whatever level you're in in life. But be alert. The opposite of being alert is being sleepy all the time. I'm taking a siesta. My siestas last me months, weeks, years. Some people are not alert. People in the church, people in the Lord, they just kind of day by day, the same old, same old. Que será, será. Nothing changes. Same routine. Business as usual. God wants you and I to spring up. Ping, ping, boom. Come alive in the Lord. Be alert. Hey, there's an opportunity. I was working in a detox unit one time in a hospital. And uh, there was two people arguing. One of them was a counselor. The other one was a patient. And they were arguing in the hallway, openly. And uh, I saw the uh, argument escalating, and so I decided to get in. I was new at the job. I had been there a year. But I'd been around other places, so I knew. So I got in, and I told the patient, listen, can I talk to you in my office? Let's talk. And I took him away from the uh, argument, and the argument was uh, petty stuff. He wanted two car fares. They usually give you one. At that time, it was a token or a metro car, whatever it was. He wanted two of them. And the counselor said, yeah, you're only entitled to one. So I pulled him over to the side, and I talked to him. I said, calm down. Listen, you have a right to be upset. And when I said that, he said, really? You agree with me? I said, you have a right to be upset. The only problem is that there's a way to handle this. There's a way to go about these things. You're ready to argue and perhaps be kicked out because you're going to lose. But there's a way to address these things. Let me see what I can do for you. And I went outside. I left him in my office. I went to the council. I said, let's get the guy two tokens. What's the big deal? He says he wants to come back in the morning. He doesn't have coffee. Give him two tokens. You're not losing anything. The city pays for that. All taxes at least. He gave me two metro cars. gave it to the guy. He was. The director of the program was observing. They were watching. They were watching me in action. Said, Who's this guy? He calmed this down. He... Gave the guy the two tokens, everything's all right. Now, he called me over. It was a female doctor, big doctor. Called me over and says, what's your name? What do you do here? I said, I'm new here. I'm doing intakes, counselor. He says, you know, I'm starting a new program, a new intake. And I want everybody that comes to the hospital to go through you. You seem to know how to handle people. You work good with people. And they promoted me, gave me a different title, senior counselor, promoted me and put me in charge because she saw that. That was an opportunity for me to, boom, to grow, to move on, to move up. That's what happens when you're ready on the dance floor. I was on the dance floor. I was just ready to dance. And so the opportunity came. So be alert. Be alert. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of what's going on in your life.
What's going on around your life? Number one is be alert, which means quick to notice. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Know the seasons. Hear the news so you can know about what's going on with these hurricanes that are going to these little islands. What's going on in New York? What's going on in your city? Be alert. Be aware so you can pray and you know what to do because you're vigilant. Number two, expectation. If you're going to be on the dance floor, then expect to dance at some point. Don't go on the dance floor and just stand there like a bump on a lock or a floor, I mean a flower on the wall. You're ready to dance, so be expecting. Be in the expectancy of the Lord that he's going to bless you, that you're getting ready to dance on the dance floor. So be expecting. You pray, expect answers to prayer. You give, expect a harvest to come back your way. You plant the seed and expect the increase. Because God doesn't owe anything to anyone and he never stays with anything that belongs to anyone. He will bless you and he will bless you mightily. So be expecting. Don't just go around tiptoeing through the tulips not knowing what's going to happen. Expect a blessing. Expect a healing. Expect a deliverance. Expect a miracle from God because that's what he does. He blesses his people. Come on, shout praise the Lord with me. Somebody. Hey! Hey! Be expecting. Be alert. Be expecting. I'll conclude with this last one here. Expecting is, uh, means something pleasant will happen. Something pleasant. Listen, I'm expecting something pleasant. I know stuff that's going on, the negative stuff and the calamities and the disaster, but I, I'm expecting something pleasant. I got up in the morning, I breathed, that's something pleasant. I looked in the mirror, my life still, I, I still feel good, I look good, I think good. That's something pleasant. And if you don't think you look good, you need to recheck yourself, reevaluate yourself, because God don't make junk. Everything that God makes is beautiful. So you need to look at yourself and say, oh, I'm wonderfully made. I'm beautiful. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about vanity. Stop that junk that you're thinking. It's not nothing to do with vanity. It has nothing to do with pride. It just has to do lining up with who God says you are. Come on. Give God praise. God says you're beautiful. God says you're wonderful. God says you're marvelous. Then you need to line up with that and think that up for yourself. You don't need nobody to tell you that. God tells you that. Accept it. Be expecting something pleasant will happen. Woo! Hey, 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 hey! I expect something pleasant! I'm a pleasant person. I expect something pleasant to come my way. Now let me conclude with the last one. Be prepared. Be prepared. That means action, ready. That simply means that you are on the dance floor, ready to dance. You're prepared. That's good. Prepare for use. God wants to use you. Now, let me conclude with that one. Be prepared. Listen to me. You know sports, in baseball, the game of football, basketball. If you know sports or any other sport, you got to be prepared. One day the coach may go up there and say, uh, Sammy D, I need somebody to go up there to the plate and hit the ball. He said, what? Hit the ball? Anybody got a bat I can borrow? How do you swing this bat? He may tell you, listen, Roger, I need you to go out there and bounce the ball. Boom, shoot, hoop. Get the two points for us to win the game. Huh? How do you bounce this ball? You're not, you're not prepared. You're not prepared. Whether it's music or anything else, any art, any talent, any gifts. You. One day I walked into my church early in the morning, my old church, beautiful, beautiful, my pastor, Pastor Luciano Padilla Jr. I call him General Padilla. He's a four-star general in the kingdom of God. And I was sitting there, it was Sunday morning, place is packed, bro, 800 people in there. And I'm sitting there, and he came up to me. He said, Sam. I said, yeah, Pastor. He says, listen, the preacher's not showing up. Can you preach this morning? I said, Pastor, just give me the mic. Give me the mic. I didn't tell him, wait a minute, I gotta go downstairs and pray. Give me four hours to get ready. I gotta fast. I gotta really read the word. I gotta be, read five books of the Bible Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, the Psalms. No. I told him, give me the mic. 
Give me the mic. I'm ready. I'm prepared. I read my Bible. I study. I meditate. I'm prepared. In season, out of season. Whatever it is you do. Whatever it is you've been called for. Don't get caught with your, forgive my statement, pants down. Be prepared. So take that with you. Opportunity dances with those who are already on the dance floor. Woo, woo, woo. Practice your steps, baby, because one day you will be called a dance. I don't know what dance you like. The mambo, the tango, the cha-cha-cha, reggae, jazz, ballet, whatever it is. Be prepared to dance it. Don't forget disco. Be prepared. Freestyle. Be alert. Expectation. I'm expecting. It's coming. I'm expecting it. And finally, be prepared. Get ready, because you'll be called upon. Father in Jesus, now pray everybody listen to me right now. By the Holy Spirit will touch, heal, and deliver, Lord. Bless this neighborhood, Lord. I pray for everybody. Listen, there's a lot of stuff going on in my neighborhood. I'm in the in the OK Corral. I'm in the uh, uh, Dodge City. This is gun smoke out here. Anything goes. You don't need to go to the theaters. You don't need to go to the movies. All you need to do is look out your window or walk down the street. You see all kinds of drama. You want adventure. You want mystery. You want horror. Whatever kind of movie you like. Comedy. Whatever you like. You'll see it out here it's happening baby and i love it because i'm in the midst of all this stuff with an opportunity to be a light in the midst of darkness to be a message for those that are in a mess to be a testimony for those that are in a lifestyle of drugs and bound by all kinds of crimes and addictions that's what i do i share jesus with people i tell people about what god has done in my life he can do for you so be prepared to do what God called you to do in Jesus name I pray I send a word of healing deliverance power of God touch your life en el nombre de Jesús Dios te bendiga cielo amén si sí, Cristo vive si sí. so God bless everyone I want to leave you with that thought okay in Jesus name amen